We've got breaking news from the NBA, which has handed down a lifetime ban on Jonte Porter for violating the league's gambling rules. The league said an investigation revealed that while playing for the Raptors, Porter disclosed confidential information to bettors, limited his playing time for betting purposes, and bet on NBA games. Adam Silver, the commissioner for the NBA, releasing a statement earlier today saying, quote, there is nothing more important than protecting the integrity of NBA competition for our fans, our teams, and everyone associated with the sport. He went on to say, which is why Jonte Porter's blatant violation of our game, gaming rules are being met with the most severe punishment. It is severe indeed. So let's bring in our NBA insider, Bill Ryder, to discuss Jonte Porter. The news here, uh, Bill, Adam Silver is clearly wanting to stomp this out early, making an example out of Porter. I just love your reaction to this news now that we've seen it come directly from the NBA. Yeah, Haley, you're, you're right. This is, I talked to some league officials a few months ago before this news came out and this investigation began, and they express this as their nightmare scenario. They understand, like all professional sports leagues understand now, that gambling's part of their reality, but navigating it so these sorts of things don't happen is the ultimate goal. And while it's not on the NBA, it's obviously a terrible day for the NBA. And while Haley, the expectation was if the NBA's investigation found that Jonte Porter bet at all on NBA games of any kind, he would be suspended for life as he's been, I still think it's shocking because the fact that he bet on his own team to lose which is one of the things the NBA's investigation found it is stunning. I mean, it is he's not a star like Pete Rose, but is Pete Rose in the level to which this dirties the game and soils the NBA's attempts to separate the gambling reality from the sports reality? The fact that their investigation found that he did, in fact, as the initial report suggested and what led to the investigation, bet on himself or leak information to allow bets on himself in a parlay involving his play and the allegation that he feigned being sick in order to come hit some of the unders. It is an eyebrow raiser. It is a very, very big deal. Credit the NBA for getting the information and moving swiftly. But these are ugly facts the NBA has revealed about what John T. Porter allegedly did. And it makes sense from the NBA's perspective that he will never play in the association again. Yeah, I love it. And as you were talking, I was going through the statement just to sort of match up how egregious really this is becoming as the NBA has learned information. And to your point, they did make swift decisions in terms of not allowing him to return back to the NBA. But I can imagine that Porter is not the only player who has, you know, dabbled in this sort of activity. So if you're the NBA, you're trying to stomp this out initially here, but what conversations are you hearing about in terms of, you know, trying to make sure that that's eliminated from the game completely? So those across the NBA, just when, when the reporting initially came down and the investigation began and some follow-up conversations by text briefly in the last 10, 15 met, minutes, uh, Haley, reflect good news, bad news. So the bad news is exactly what you're suggesting. It is not lost on people across the NBA that people with gambling problems gamble too much, lie about their gambling, and can get desperate in their attempts to hide that. And, and that is not restricted to any kind of person, any walk of life, including people who happen to play professional sports. So it's something they'll have to root out, and it's a worry, and it's not a good day, but if you're looking for a silver lining for the NBA, better Jonte Porter than any superstar, any big-time player. At the risk of being disrespectful to Porter, this was a nobody in the terms of how many minutes he played a game, but obviously now with somebody in terms of this conversation about gambling. The other good news, and someone pointed this out to me from the NBA league office, so it's worth mentioning, is that because gambling is legal now in many states and because it is socially acceptable, you do have outcomes like this one where someone can bet legally, right, different than the Shoya Otani story, bet legally, and a bookmaker can look at a bet and say, this doesn't make sense, this doesn't track with how these bets should be playing, and then, as happened here, those bookmakers, whether they're online or their actual land-based casinos, can refer the matter to the NBA or any other sports league. So this league source told me, hey, it's not good news, but we found out because there's an infrastructure in place now and the culture of gambling now where there is problematic betting, there is going to be the ability for us to be alerted and do these investigations. And the hope in the NBA is that is a message to other players, do not do this. And it gives them a bit of a safety net if people make that mistake, that the NBA feels like at least we have a good chance to figure this out root this out and not have it severely impact our sport. So going forward, because one of the things you mentioned that I kind of want to follow up on here, if it was a star player, you know, and I don't want to put a name on it, obviously, for respect reasons, but let's say it was a player who is really, really a big star in the NBA. Do you think the outcome would have been similar with that lifetime ban? And then to take it a step further here, how does the NBA move forward so, again, they can keep this from happening in the future? 
Yeah, great question. I won't, I won't put a name to it either, but you're right. Imagine the biggest names in the game, and if it were one of those names, yes, it, it would be a lifetime ban. And I think Adam Silver has shown, and you mentioned this earlier, earlier, his ability to move swiftly and his ability to move boldly. I know Donald Sterling should not own a team in the NBA, and that was the right decision. But at the time, what, a decade ago, when he was caught on tape using racist and pejorative language, Adam Silver getting rid of that owner of the, then of the Clippers was not a, was not a guarantee. Because those owners, when you add them all up, all 30 of them, are Adam Silver's boss. He moved quickly. He moved boldly. He's done that here with, with, with Jonte Porter. And I think if there were a superstar who was accused of this, they would suspend him immediately if they thought it was a credible report. I'm speculating, of course, and I certainly would bet everything I have, uh, no pun intended, that they would suspend that person for life if they gambled on games. I, I will say this. The NBA's view of this, and just people around the league, is that there's less risk that you're going to have superstars, Haley, engage in this behavior because they do make a lot more money. The, the, the logic being, well, they have a lot more to lose and they don't need the money. And my counter to that would be, and has been to them, probably right. But again, people who have gambling issues and who are have gambling problems sometimes can get themselves in trouble even if they make a lot of money. So it's certainly something the NBA is aware of and they're going to keep their eye on. And I can tell you, as much as this is not good news today on Jante Porter, they are very glad it is that particular player who is banned for life and not a superstar or even all-star level player. Yeah, Bill, we know you got to get out of here for a podcast. One last question before I let you go here. Adam Silver talked about preserving the integrity of the game going forward. So do you anticipate there being any changes? Because I know Silver's been a guy who's been kind of open about the idea of, of betting, not from his players, obviously, but uh, do you anticipate any changes going forward here? I don't think so. You're right. Adam Silver, I think to his credit, recognized before the NFL, before Major League Baseball, that gambling was one of the future cornerstones of American sports. It just, it is. And even though the NBA does not have a team in Las Vegas, they, they will eventually. They were a big part of the reason I think that that was able to occur. Gambling is socially acceptable and is accepted in the halls of power in, in major sports. That's not changing. And Adam Silver, you're right, is a is a catalyst for that in the country in general. So I think what you're going to have is a continued emphasis on gambling. I mean, the, the timing is not great for the NBA, Haley, because you can now go on their 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 product, their their league pass, and watch games that are out of whatever market you're in. And in some of those markets, you can gamble. They have the ability to link you up with legal gambling venues while you watch games. They're all in on gambling. What will continue to happen is even the smallest whiff of smoke of impropriety, impropriety or, or problematic behavior or, or gambling, you will see massive bans lifetime bans will be the rule. So I think it'll be the carrot and the stick. They're going to embrace gambling, but obviously players and people associated with the game cannot bet on NBA games or on the NBA. And if, if they do, their fate will be the same as, as John Jay Porter's. Certainly can't pretend to be sick as well while you're betting on games too. Just uh, a whole lot wrong with this situation, but the NBA got it right here. Bill Ryder joining us to discuss this lifetime ban John Jay Porter is now looking ahead to. We certainly appreciate your time, Bill. You can catch more of Bill Ryder as well as Ashley Nicole Moss and our John Gonzalez on the newest podcast, Beyond the Arc. They discuss all things news in the NBA as it rolls out. So make sure you scan that QR code on your screen or listen in wherever you get your podcast.